He just, bored. Yeah. Bored. Bored. You know, I hear that word every day. They're bored. All these graffiti guys are all bored. So basically, he wanted a response. He wanted a reaction. He got I, a I believe he wanted some attention, and he got, uh, he got it. What did the rest of the people in the bowling alley do? I mean, well, I, um, must have been a let's just say, <laughs> let's just say that uh, when they realized that the police were outside, uh, it was sort of a long line to uh, be a witness. And normally, we have a problem obtaining witnesses. <laughs> it seemed like he's pretty scary. Yeah, what's going to happen to this guy? Well, all I can really tell you, Reno, is that uh, it's it's been sent down to the district attorney's office. Also, a copy of it has been sent to the. Uh, State Attorney's Office, uh, being that it is a federal offense, yeah. burning American flag. I think he's salvageable. I really do. I mean, he's smart. If he goes to jail, he's going to be a smart, he's going to learn a lot of things there, and he'll be smart. I mean, well, if I can have him turn the corner now, whatever happens, is that, number one, you're still in the middle of the school for a period of, I don't know how many months, a couple months, a few months. All these hearings and all these things that are going to happen are going to happen during the middle of the week, and you cannot postpone them all the time. You can look ahead and realize there's only so many days left in this program. And uh, there's a lot of things that you probably can get some value out of. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to get busted anymore. It's just, I well, can't have. I think you're smart. I mean, there's some people that are so dumb, they'll get busted because they're just dumb. Well, but I think you're smart enough to avoid it. Really, at the time when I burned the flag, I, I didn't know what was up. I mean, I, I didn't think there was any law. I just you know, found the flag, you know, hey, let's burn it. Nothing else to do. Mm. Yeah, well, politically, that's pretty symbolic. I mean, I mean it's like especially these days. There's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of animosity towards the graffiti, a lot of animosity towards a lot of things. I don't care what society thinks. Well, you might care about what they do. Yeah, I because care I about do. that, but I do I because about what they think. No, it's not what they think. You're right. The thinking isn't the part of it is when your freedom is taken away. Like, if you can't go on a wilderness trip, you may care. Yeah, And they can do that. And that's what I'm concerned about, because that's, you know, let's start from that point. I just hate systems. I just want to get away from it. See how, you know, you know other countries and stuff. Yeah, they, have, they might have systems, but I think that would be a good idea. Um, yeah, I know they have systems, but the, where I, you know, the Peace Corps per, per, goes, it's like to the poor people and stuff, mm -hmm. where, you know, you, you used to see what the system left out. You know, it's, I think that would be you know, interesting and stuff. Well, I think that one of the projects you might want to investigate this even more. Mm -hmm. Find out all about the Peace Corps. Yeah. Pretty easy what you need to do. Now, one thing I want to just tell you right now, uh, the Peace Corps does not take anybody mm -hmm. to be in the Peace Corps. You have to have some kind of a skill. You have to be pretty solid for the simple reason that you're left out there for two years with very little resources. Keep me informed about what happens here, and uh, you know we'll just take it one step at a time. You find out what your purpose is somewhere along the line, and you go after it. You interview people who are in that business. And I mean, you don't go down to the career center and put on a videotape about, well, this is the way we go to work, go to work as a plumber. You go out there and find out what that guy does for his vacation. You ask him questions like, would you do it again if you were me? Ask me about teaching sometime. You go and find out exactly what it's going to take for you to go after this particular career. I'd say you better do it now because uh, you have the time. Start talking to yourself in those journals. Start figuring it out. You people won't even know each other in another five years. We're all going to be disappeared. I'll be part of the environment someplace, maybe. Do you understand that? Start thinking. The time for thinking is starting. I didn't know how to speak English very well or even write very well until I was about in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. However, I had a teacher that short-circuited the whole thing. She kind of like got me moving. <laughs> this person got me just basically involved and I was afraid, I hated it, I resisted it and all of a sudden everything clicked. I knew the content. All of a sudden I screamed to the head of the class. It was one of these things where overnight it was like a miracle and basically it was always inside of me just like it's inside of you so what made you be a teacher with what was your your um goal to be a teacher i really didn't want to teach i mean i wanted to be a research scientist climb mountains and all that kind of thing and uh i just 
started to like it, and all of a sudden, it seems like I've only been teaching five years, and I never thought I'd be doing it for 20 years. Discovery was a big thing. It was really an important thing for me, to be able to show them that, hey, maybe if we go down that canyon, something will, will appear. And that's uh, where I started to get into the um, idea of the wilderness school. Um, and how, how does job pay? Uh, teaching is, uh, uh, I guess it's a, it's a good start as far as pay goes. And uh, it kind of uh, doesn't, doesn't go up as you get a little older. It doesn't matter how much education you have, you kind of like stay at this little, little increased level. When you got the Teacher Year Award, did it change your salary in any way? No, it didn't. Not one extra penny do you get for that. You do get a lot of extra responsibility because the whole thing with the Teacher of the Year is that you're a representative of teachers in this state. And that meant that whomever wanted me to speak, I don't care if it was the, uh, the Brownies or the, uh, you know, the Rotary Club of San Francisco, I would go. That was my duty for one year. It's almost like Miss America, you know? When you're little, you always think about being a teacher or mm -hmm. something, but then after, when you go through all the years of school and you've been through all the everything, getting suspended and all that stuff, then you just don't care. You're like, I hate them. <laughs> no, it's all attitude. This is the way you look at something. You know, some people drive by that school and think it's a prison. I drive by and say, geez, that's a really nice looking place there. Things are happening there. That's where the human beings are. You got to go where the human beings are. We're going to be nearby in San Francisco all day, preparing for our rock climbing in Joshua Tree. We're going to go for it in terms of a rappel today. Now, a rappel is exciting. It's also very dramatic, and it's one of the fastest ways of traveling in the mountains. You'll all belay each other over the side of an 80-foot cliff. One thing I want to say is that with this ledge and this cliff, I would really want you to be very aware this is more dangerous than anything we ever do because of the fact that you could easily get comfortable on the top and then right over the side. Oh, my God! Go ahead, just take your time coming on over. Okay, sleep slowly. Oh, good. Any problem at all. When you're smart, you know what you're doing. You push yourself back at the same time as you open your fingers right here, and the rope slips through. Okay? Okay. So it's kind of like a, like, it's like a dance. It's like a, an urge, like a, a, a pull that happens. But you never let go of the rope. Always this hang one? on with the rope with okay. the right hand, okay? Always. Always. What this here is just a sliding hand. Oh, this isn't even, you don't even need it. It's just kind of like it helps you balance. That's all it does. <laughs> it's a slider. Slides. Slide. Slide it now. Just what? slide. Slide. It's all right. <laughs> Good. All right? Okay. All right, go ahead and start. Now, it takes effort. Okay, leave me alone. Okay. You concentrate. Shit. Fine. I'm going to do... die. Be quiet now back here. Okay, what you want to do is you've got to get your body over the edge there by pushing, pulling back, okay? Now, this this hand has got to slide down. Yeah, okay, get back up a little bit. Please just relax. Okay, now back up and get the weight onto this yellow rope. Okay, now you see how that feels? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and kind of like yank on, yank on the yellow rope. Uh, kind of squat and pull back a little bit. See like that? Right. Okay, that's it. Huh? You gotta let the rope, more rope out. Good. It's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Leap out a little bit and open your hand at the same time. Just leave it in that hand. You don't have to put, shove it up there. Just open and close, open and close. That was great. Good job. If you know where you are, you can go any place. You have to know where you're beginning, who you are, where you came from, and where you want to go. You really have to be clear about where you want to go. Now, you people are going into the desert. The desert is not a, a cute little place. There are no big mountains. The whole place looks the same. So you're going to depend on a map and a compass. 
The compass basically responds to magnetism. There is a pile of material, of rock, at the top of the world, somewhere around here. There's a pile of magnetic material that attracts certain ore, okay? And it's always the same. Line up any straight line going towards the top of the map with the needle. That means that the map is set up just about how like the land is. Now here is where the big trick comes in. Once you set your map up and you pull it out of your pack, you put it down on the ground, you look at the map, you look at the land. You look at the map, you look at the land. You really look at the map and you say that ridge and you really look out the land and say that's the ridge. That, that, they're the same. Once you can do that, you're starting to get some benefit from your tools. But you got to do this. How uh, many boys and girls have only this trip? We had a parrot knife that explained it, but I guess you couldn't come. We have uh, two instructors for every group of seven. Did you get you get all the information on the trip? Do you know where we're going to be? There's a contact number and everything like no, that. No, I didn't. Get that. Okay, come on in. I'll let me get you that. Stick. Come on in, please. You can see all the paper that work that we have on everybody. So. Yeah. Okay. Then. Thank and you she'll be much. able. To, sure. And she'll be able to call you. Will you be home tonight? Because we'll be uh, uh, on a bus. And she'll be able to call you and tell you how everything's going in the first okay. first days. And then we we'll work be... at night, so we're home during the day. Or so. Okay. Want to wake these guys up? Yeah, how are they doing? Doing okay. Time to get up, guys. Hey, Joe. Oh. Time. time to get up. How you doing, Thais? Hey, Brett. Time to get up. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be your day. They were killing me last night. I got a bite right here. Mm. Just scrape it off. Yeah. Or we'll just scrape it into somebody's bowl. Like mine, for instance. <laughs> oh. Here, hold it. Don't close it yet. What are you gonna do, Joe? What? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna sit back and write in your journal, aren't they? I'm probably gonna lie out of the side of my baby. Add, write my journal, add, take. We had a good solo briefing. We talked about fears and what it's like to be alone. This will be very unique for them in that it's isolation from being alone. So that's like pretty profound for them. Did anybody bring a mirror? Want some water? Yeah. Get all the stuff you need together for solo. I'm sure you know what that is at this point, right? Right. Okay. And then close up your backpacks because they'll stay here. Put your food bags in your packs too. Make sure they're all closed up. If you have anything like honey or food that is just spilled into your pack, make sure you don't have that in there because the mice might chew into it today. This will be a good time to think. Hey, this is a chance for you to review what you've gone through in the last couple of days, that internal stuff where you did something that you didn't think you could do, where you came here a long way from Daly City, and you can think about all of it in terms of you, yourself. This is just a chance to kind of anticipate a few things, too. You'll have 24 hours alone. Water, definitely. Warm clothes. <laughs> Sunscreen, your letters, pencil, writing utensil, uh, sleeping bag, ground tarp, insulite pad. When we get to there, we'll figure out, designate your boundaries. It's so important they stay in there. Respect each person's solo site. Good luck. Okay, then you have to wait for me to get my stuff ready. I will. I have patience. Remember, I spent the last four days with you. Hey, good luck. All right. We'll pick you up early tomorrow morning. We have breakfast for you. You have a chance to share some of your feelings with the group. I'll be back later this afternoon and have a chat with you. Okay. Okay? Okay. <laughs>